from the city of Beaky Blinders, Birmingham, England, I would like to introduce you to Paddy Dandar. As the world becomes more automated and the robots take over, it's imperative that we build the right human skills for the future. So pull up a chair, grab a smoser or two, and make yourself very uncomfortable. Hey folks, before we jump into this episode, I just want to say a huge thank you for all of your support over the last few months. As you know, this podcast was an idea that I came up with whilst I had COVID at the end of last year, but the feedback from the listeners has been absolutely amazing. I love all the messages I received through LinkedIn, through email directly, and even the verbal feedback that some of my fellow colleagues have been giving me as well. So really want to thank you for all of your support, which brings me on to some great news. I was super chuffed when I got to hear that this show has been nominated for the Creative Industry Awards and specifically in the category of Best Content Creator. Now, none of that would be possible without the amazing guests that I get onto the show. I'm purely a facilitator of conversation. So most of the credit has to go to the great insights that people bring to this podcast. So in return, I have a huge favor to ask from you. If you could please cast your votes for me following the link in the description on whichever platform you're listening or watching this podcast episode on, that would be hugely appreciated. I have no expectation of winning any award. However, It would be great to be able to ramp up some support and votes close on midnight on the 28th of August. So please do get in your votes before then. So if you click on the link, scroll down to the best content creator section and you'll see my name somewhere in the list. And then if you submit your vote, that would be much appreciated. And thank you once again for supporting the podcast. Now let's jump into the episode. Hey folks, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Superpower School podcast. I'm your host, Paddy Dander, and today I'm particularly excited because the weather's looking fantastic outside, it's sunny, I'm feeling, I would say, happy, and that's exactly the theme of today's podcast. I have the amazing Zara Karsan with me today, who's an inspirational public speaker. She was voted as one of the top 10 success coaches by Yahoo Finance. She's a best-selling author of Six Weeks to Happy and creator of the Rewire System, which is a groundbreaking methodology that retrains your brain for greater happiness, health, wealth, and success. Wow, what a mouthful that was. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Patty. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, you're welcome. And I know the secret of your success, Sarah. You're based in such an exotic location. I think Anyone that's not happy in that location, they need to come to Birmingham. (laughs) Yes, if you like gray skies, sure. I did that once. That's what brought me here to Miami. Well, they call it the Sunshine State, Florida, and there's a reason for it. It's beautiful. But like many things, life is about choice, right? Yeah, you're right. And I think your choice is a view with the ocean right outside of your window. Is that right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's pretty spectacular. I I worked very hard in my career, but you cannot wake up in a place like this where you get to see the sunrise on the ocean in front of you every morning and not feel in a state of awe, not feel blessed and not feel in a state of gratitude. So if you already wake up feeling peaceful, then the way that you start your day sets the tone. Yeah. And so we'll be talking a little bit more about that for sure today. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait. So without further ado, Zara, I'd love to know a little bit about your background, because I know you and I share some uh, commonality, but uh, it'd be great if you could share where you've come from in terms of your career and any fun facts about yourself. Of course. Well, I have a background in neuroscience, positive psychology, and mindset coaching and consulting. I had a 25-year career, and my first career was as a management consultant, where I got to work as a trusted advisor to C-level executives, and I worked on big projects, like five to 50 million. So they were High stress, very demanding. And, you know, I loved that role. I loved being wired like that and being brought in for such big strategic projects. There was an excitement about it. But I mean, it can also be extremely, extremely taxing, you know, in terms of stress levels and and the way that you manage your energy. And so I started just learning about, you know, how we manage our energy, how we manage our stress observing so many different personality types and different ways of being 
within the corporate world. And so I was in IT and telecom me for that many years. And what I ended up doing was I ended up using all of that research to develop a simple set of strategies called the rewire system that you can learn in just six weeks to help bring you that lasting change in your life. Because what I remember from being in the corporate world was, you know, it just felt like I was, I was always on a treadmill. Like I was always sprinting or like running a marathon was no finish line. And I thought, well, that can't be right. You know, how can we all just be doing this thing called life and just expecting peace and happiness to show up when most of us wake up every day, barely able to peel our head off the pillow. You know, if when we look at our day ahead, we're not excited, but we're anxious and nervous and tired and stressed. And I just wanted that to stop. And so that's what set me down this whole path is my, I wouldn't say a nervous breakdown, but I would say I, I definitely was tightly wound, very high strung. I was type A, you know, that's what you, you need to be that personality to do this kind of job, right? You yeah. want to be a top, top performing management consultant. You need to be at the top of your game, which means you're performing at a very high level all the time. And you expect that from your teams as well. But that level of execution and performance is not sustainable all the time. You need to find ways to bring balance back into your life. And when I talk to people in the corporate world and when I talk to executives and entrepreneurs, this concept of balance doesn't even come into play. They're like, what are you talking about? I wake up at 5 a.m., I go to bed at 11 or 1, and I start the same thing over and over. I sleep on the weekends, I play on the weekends, but I work. Right. Okay. That's fine. That's, you know, that's hard work. And so I set down this path of what if you could still function at a high level? Like I got really interested in human performance and tapping into human potential. So the, this, the name of this show, the superpower school is perfect because I really became fascinated with how do we tap into our own superpowers and help us perform better so that we're less stressed, less tired, less drained of energy and able to choose to spend energy more wisely and boost our own performance, boost our own potential and step into a greater mindset. And so I became really fascinated with what separated most of us that got stuck and the few that managed to excel, whether it was in great wealth or great success. I mean, how many top CEOs are there in the world? And then you have this triangle where the rest of the people fall underneath that. Well, why did those CEOs raise to the top? What are the skills that they learned and they acquired to be the best version of themselves? And so I set down this path of trying to understand in this mess of data between neuroscience and positive psychology and my coaching practice and, and management consulting. And I realized it comes down to really, really simple strategies. And anyone can learn this in as little as 10 minutes per day. And so some of the questions I asked were, you know, is it possible to find calm and find some inner peace and, and rewire away from stress and still be high performing? Would you lose anything? And so I started asking the questions because I'm a natural skeptic. And so I need to see the data and you need to prove something to me like hard. You need, I need hard proof. I need scientific, scientific evidence. I need the data. But if you explain to me that the benefits are quick and powerful, I'll do anything. I'll do anything to get the benefits, whether or not I believe in the process, because I want the end result. And as management consultants, as you would know, being in the having a telecom background yourself is, you know, we're, we're all about delivering results. When you're delivery focused, like you are in the project management world and agile and, you know, in the in the management consulting world, it's all about delivering results. And so I took that same approach. And I became fascinated with these almost two parts of us. We have a per personal self and a personal life, and we have our professional self and our professional life. And so many of us cultivate skills in the professional world, but we don't take that same structure and apply it to our personal lives. And so I thought, if I became a master at delivering results at this level, why don't I create a methodology to teach people how to bring themselves back to balance? and be more productive and be more creative and relaxed and happier and more excited about their life and their work. And so that's what I put together in the rewire system. And that's what's in the book, Six Weeks to Happy. And I'm very excited to be here to share it with you today. Oh, wow. 
I think there's just so much in there that I could just pick at right now. But if I think back to my time in the corporate world, fun was never part of that working culture. It's only recently, I think, that I've discovered fun. I used to be in environments where everybody used to be quiet, sitting down, busily working away. And I remember even in a big global bank, I started bringing Lego to some of my sessions, my workshops. So I'd be in the lift with a big box of Lego and just the looks from some of the execs and some of the other people. Yeah, there was this sort of notion that what are you doing? That stuff doesn't belong here. We're a formal corporate organization. And I think bringing fun and happiness into your day-to-day life within even the workplace, I think is invaluable because how many people say, I'm so looking forward to the weekend. And I say, why? Oh, we're going to have fun. It's like, so (laughs) there were other five days we've not had fun. And now we're going to spend just two days having it. Like what's that all about? What I learned in the world of neuroscience is if you want to spark creativity and innovation, which I mean, all companies want that, right? To stay ahead and strategic thinking. Here's what's interesting. Strategic thinking and creative thinking is the same process. So if you want to spark creativity and strategic thinking in the world of neuroscience, they tell you, you should be relaxed and happy. Right. So sleep more, play more. You know, it's that whole idea of the eureka moment. You know, you had the scientist that was trying to understand the concept of how to calculate volume. And he ended up running a bath for himself and hopping in the bath and the water spilled over and he, he, he screamed out eureka. And that was a moment where he understood how to calculate volumes in in odd-shaped containers. But it's the same idea. He stepped away from the work and just allowed his brain to relax, allowed himself to quiet the mind, and the solution just floated up to the surface, literally. 